Let us together pray the ninth novena to St. Ignatius of Loyola and our theme shall be Caring for the Company of Jesus. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Introduction Along with two of his companions, Peter Faber and James Linus, St. Ignatius decided to go to Rome and place themselves at the disposal of the Pope. It was a few miles outside of the city that Ignatius had the second most significant of his mystical experiences. At the chapel at La Storta, where they had stopped to pray, Ignatius felt God the Father telling him that he will be favorable to him in Rome and that he would place him with his son. From this moment, the journey to Jerusalem ceased to be the focus of Ignatius's ideals. The offer of themselves to the Pope became his all-encompassing ideal. During this novena, we pray for the grace that we humbly join St. Ignatius in begging for the grace to be placed with the Son under the banner of the cross. Opening Prayer O Lord, in your providence you guided St. Ignatius to found the Society of Jesus. Bring to fulfillment the work you began in Ignatius and in so many of his sons in the Society. As we celebrate the Ignatian Jubilee year, bestow on us the same spirit as that of Ignatius and the first companions. Grant that we be ever zealous to radiate your love despite the evil that surrounds us. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. We shall now listen to a scripture passage from John chapter 21 verses 15 to 19. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. A second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Tend my sheep. Jesus said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he had said to him the third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and go wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. He said this to indicate the kind of death by which he would glorify God. After this, he said to him, Follow me. We shall spend a few moments in silence reflecting on the passage and also on the life of Ignatius, asking the Lord to also give us the grace to be placed with the Son under the banner of the cross.
At their last halt before Rome, Inigo stepped into the tiny half-ruined chapel at La Storta. Once more, he revealed to his divine master all that occupied his mind and heart. Then, all of a sudden, it was Manresa again. A mystical illumination penetrated into the very depths of his being. An illusion which he would never again forget. And he felt impelled to describe it to his companions who were waiting by the roadside. Linus would later write, He told me that it was as if God the Father had impressed these words on his heart. I will be favorable to you in Rome. Since our father did not understand what the words would signify, he added, I do not know what will happen to us. Perhaps we shall be crucified in Rome. Then he said it seemed to him as if he beheld Christ with the cross on his shoulder and by his side the Eternal Father who thus spoke to his son, I desire you to take this man as your servant. Jesus accepted him with the words, It is my will that you serve us. Consequently, he had an immense devotion to the name of Jesus and desired his company to be named the Society of Jesus. Let us spend a few moments in silence and place our prayers and petitions before the Lord. Our response shall be, Lord, hear our prayer. Over the centuries, many men and women are served and are serving under the banner of the cross on God's mission which was entrusted to St. Ignatius near Rome. We pray that God bestow plentiful grace on these laborers of God's mission. For this we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the Superior General that as the world goes through turmoil and helplessness, he discern what is better for the Catholic Church and the Society of Jesus in these critical times. For this we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. Ignatius gave us a tool of discernment to identify God's gift to each of us. We pray that all the faithful get assistance from priests and religious sisters to discern God's gift and plan for them. For this we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. Saint Ignatius prayed fervently and insistently to be placed with the Son, and his prayer was granted. May God grant the same grace to the whole society of Jesus. For this we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. That God give us the grace to know His presence in our everyday lives, to know Him as a constant companion in times of loneliness, sadness, suffering and uncertainty. For this we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from all evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Concluding prayer, O God, for the greater glory of your name, 
you chose Saint Ignatius to be your servant, to labor for Christ and your Church under the banner of the cross. Grant us the grace of being his sons in the society that bears your son's name, that through the help and example of our father Ignatius, we may spend our lives on earth for the cause of faith and justice. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen.